Here's a tricky puzzle. Take a bicycle, stand it up on level ground, and tie a string to its lower pedal. I'm leaning this bike slightly against this table so it doesn't tip over, but you can just have a friend hold it lightly to keep it from falling to the side. Now, pull straight back on the string. Will the bicycle start to move backward, or forward, or not at all? Why don't you pause this video now and think about it. Okay, what's your prediction? Most people predict it'll go forward. Like pedaling, you're applying a clockwise torque to the pedals, which makes them rotate clockwise, and the rear wheel, connected by the chain, also rotates clockwise, which we know makes the bike go forward. That may seem plausible. Right now, the back wheel is going clockwise, but I'm holding this bike in the air, so this isn't exactly the same as having it on the ground. Does that make a difference? Do you want to keep thinking and maybe change your answer? Why not pause now to think more about what happens and why before I pull this string and demonstrate? Okay, if you take a bike out of your garage and experiment, you'll discover that when you pull the string, the bike starts to go backward. And the rear wheel is going counterclockwise. Why is that? Well, the reason isn't we pull backward so it goes backward. I'll show you in a minute why that's too simple an answer. Instead, look carefully at how a bike pedal moves relative to the ground. In the lower half of its revolution, the pedal goes backward relative to the bike, but watch carefully and you'll see that it's going forward relative to the ground. That's because the pedal moves slowly compared to the bike. So if you drag a string behind the pedal of a bike moving forward, the string is always moving forward. Now just play that movie backward in your mind, and it may be clear how pulling the string backward could make the bike move backward. They move forward together, so they move backward together. So I hope I flipped your intuition about what to expect, and now it makes sense that the bike goes backward. But there's more to the story. Let me flip your intuition again. Here's where a mathematical imagination lets me see another possibility. I claim the bike could also go forward, but not your bike. Watch this. Again, I pull the same pedal backward, but now the bike moves forward. What's different is that I have this bike in a very low gear. Most bikes don't have a gear this low, so you probably can't reproduce this at home. You'd need a super low climbing gear to make a bike go forward this way. I first calculated how low a gear is needed, then I had this bike custom modified with a very large rear sprocket to bring the math into reality. When the ratio of the pedal radius to the wheel radius is larger than the ratio of the front sprocket to the rear sprocket, the bike moves forward. In low gears, you pedal faster to travel the same distance. You get a mechanical advantage because you apply a small force over a larger distance, as Archimedes explained, though not with bicycles. In this really low gear, you have to pedal so fast that at the bottom of its revolution, the pedal goes backwards relative to the ground. The bike moves forward as the pedal is pulled backward. Bikes don't usually have gears this low because you're better off walking than having your feet go backward. The clearest way to understand all this is to explore the complete trajectory of a point on the pedal. Its path through space is called a trochoid. This is the curve generated by a point rotating on a circle, while the center of the circle moves along a line at constant speed. There are three kinds of trochoid, depending on how fast the circle rotates compared to how fast it moves. In the simplest case, imagine the circle rolling along the ground, making a series of arcs with a cusp each time the point touches the ground. The cusp is where it reverses from down to up. In a second case, let the circle rotate faster to generate a trochoid that crosses over itself. This is the very low gear case, where the point is sometimes moving backward. In the third case, the rotation is slow, and we just get a wavy line. This corresponds to how the pedal moves in most bikes in most gears. The pedal is always moving forward. Here's a related experiment you can do with a spool of thread, or a yo-yo. Pull at a low angle, and the spool moves towards you. But pull at a high angle, and the spool moves away. A bike can have the same two behaviors. Pulling backward at the bottom of the cycle makes this bike go backward, but you could also pull at a higher angle to make the bike go forward. 
Mathematics clarifies the general case for any gear for any direction of pull at any point in the cycle. The pedal is constrained to follow the trochoid, so the direction of the pull relative to the direction of the trochoid at that point tells us what will happen. In a high gear, pulling to the left always goes against the motion that generates the trochoid, and the bike goes backward. But if you pull upward at this point, the force has a component in the forward direction of the trochoid, and so the bike goes forward. And what about my special super low gear? Pulling to the left at the bottom of the cycle is part of the forward motion of its trochoid, so the bike goes forward. Most people are surprised to learn that pulling the pedal straight back makes their bike go backward. Challenge your friends to predict what will happen, and I bet most will get it wrong. You'll probably have to do the experiment with a real bicycle to convince them.